Digital products and services are very important to our daily lives. We use them to handle our banking online, stream movies online, and attend meetings online. When we interact with these products, we only see a digital product that just exists on our phone or computer. However, there is a massive, highly complicated physical infrastructure that supports the growth of this digital world. And data centers are the backbone of this infrastructure. Data centers are defined as facilities that house computer systems and related infrastructure used to store, process, and distribute data for businesses, governments, and other organizations. And everything digital relies on data centers. Netflix uses them to ensure smooth streaming, Google uses them to process millions of requests daily, Amazon uses them to provide cloud computing services. Even banks and stock markets process millions of transactions through data centers. And as AI continues to become a major part of our lives, it has created a booming demand for data centers. Forecasts show that the demand for data center capacity could more than triple by 2030, and data centers that can handle AI workloads will account for the majority of this growth. Demand for AI-ready data center capacity is expected to rise at an average rate of 33% a year until 2030 in a mid-range scenario. This means that around 70% of total demand for data center capacity will be for data centers equipped to host advanced AI workloads by 2030. Gen AI, currently the fastest growing advanced AI use case, will account for around 40% of the total. Demand is so strong that it has raised concerns of a possible supply deficit. To avoid this deficit, at least twice the data center capacity built since 2000 would have to be built in less than a quarter of the time. And to make sure they are not left behind in the AI race, major tech companies are spending billions of dollars building robust data center infrastructures with enough computational power to handle the AI workloads. Amazon will spend approximately $100 billion to bolster its AI infrastructure in 2025. Google expects capital expenditures to hit $75 billion in 2025, with the majority of that going to AI data centers. Meta's capital spending in 2025 is expected to reach $65 billion, with a huge chunk of that going to AI data centers, and Microsoft expects to spend $80 billion this year to construct a network of AI data centers. However, it's not just the big tech giant that are racing to expand AI-ready data center capacity. A new wave of specialized third-party data center operators has emerged, dedicated to providing the infrastructure needed for AI workloads. These companies are building high-performance, GPU-powered data centers that serve not only tech giants, but also AI startups, enterprises, and research institutions that need cutting-edge computing power without the massive upfront investment of building their own facilities. One of the biggest names in this space is CoreWeave. The company has positioned itself as a critical player in the AI boom, securing major deals with AI companies that need vast amounts of computing power. In this video, we will take a look at CoreWeave's business to better understand the AI data center business model and challenges. Let's dive into it. AI workloads require a lot of computing power, and graphic processing units or GPUs are at the center of this power. Unlike traditional CPUs, which execute tasks sequentially, GPUs are engineered to perform numerous calculations simultaneously. This parallelism is very important for AI applications, where tasks like matrix multiplications demand extensive computational resources. By distributing these tasks across thousands of cores, GPUs accelerate processes that would otherwise take a lot of time on CPUs. This efficiency has made them irreplaceable in the various AI fields ranging from natural language processing to computer vision. Despite this efficiency, AI workloads still need a lot of computational power. In fact, this power is one of the biggest costs associated with AI workloads. Take Google's Gemini model. Studies show that Google spent around $190 million training and delivering this model. And hardware, meaning computing power and data storage, accounted for between 50 and 70% of that cost. And this is where CoreWeave comes into play. The company saw the growing demand for AI-ready computing power and recognized an opportunity for AI cloud computing. CoreWeave's business is simple. They provide a cloud infrastructure that is purpose-built for GPU workloads. In more simple terms, they rent out GPUs to companies that need it. So, CoreWeave constructs the building, fits it with all the necessary systems required for a data center, and places a bunch of GPUs in the building. 
Then, companies that need GPU power can simply rent it from Corviv's data center. Corviv has seen plenty of success serving smaller companies and startups, and this makes sense. For many of these smaller companies, building and operating their own AI data center is not feasible. The cost to build these data centers can easily balloon up to tens of millions of dollars depending on the size and capacity, and this does not include the resources needed to actually manage the data center. So, instead of spending all this money and resources to build and operate data centers, it makes sense for them to simply rent the computing power they need. But it is not only small companies that use Corviv, it also serves giant tech companies. Even though these companies are building their own data centers, they cannot scale their infrastructure fast enough. As a result, they turn to third-party providers as a solution, since partnering with them allows for faster access to additional GPU power. In fact, Microsoft is rumored to be one of Corviv's biggest customers after signing a contract in 2023 that could be worth billions of dollars. Another major reason Corviv attracts customers is its partnership with Nvidia, whose GPUs are considered best in class for AI. In September 2020, Corviv joined the Nvidia Partner Network as a preferred cloud service provider. Building on this foundation, in July 2021, Corviv became Nvidia's first elite CSP for compute within the MPN program. This partnership means that Corviv has priority access to NVIDIA GPUs, often before other cloud providers. For example, Corviv was the first cloud provider to offer the NVIDIA GP200 NFL72 platform, which is designed for next-generation AI workloads. This early access allows Corviv to deploy cutting-edge AI infrastructure faster than competitors, attracting top AI firms that require the most powerful GPUs. And this strategy is paying off. The company has seen explosive revenue growth, going from $25 million in revenue in 2022 to over $2 billion in 2024, and the company expects revenue to quadruple to $8 billion by the end of 2025. But to achieve this growth, Corviv has had to rapidly scale its infrastructure. It grew its data center presence from 3 in 2022 to 28 in 2024. Furthermore, it expects to add another 10 data centers in 2025 to keep up with the demand. In fact, for a business like Corviv, data center capacity is a huge constrainer. Building data centers is an expensive and capital-intensive process. Each facility requires massive upfront investment, not just for the physical infrastructure, but also for the specialized cooling systems, networking equipment, and most importantly, the GPUs. This kind of investment can weigh heavily on a company's balance sheet, tying up billions in capital before the data center even becomes operational. Which is why, for a business like Corviv, financing plays a crucial role. Corviv funds its operations through two main methods, equity financing and debt financing. The first method, equity financing, involves selling shares to investors in exchange for capital. Investors, in return, receive ownership stakes in the company. So far, Corviv has raised a total of $2.3 billion this way. In its latest funding round, it secured $1.1 billion, bringing its valuation to $19 billion. The second method, debt financing, involves borrowing money that must be repaid with interest over time. This has been Corviv's primary way of funding its operations. Over the past two years, the company has raised more than $10 billion in debt, allowing it to rapidly expand its infrastructure and in turn boost its revenue. A key reason Corviv has been able to access so much debt is its use of trade receivable financing. This type of funding allows a company to use its trade receivables, which is money owed by their customers, as collateral to secure immediate cash. Here's how it works. Before building a data center, Corviv signs contract with customers who will use a facility. It then uses these contracts to secure debt financing. According to Corviv's chief strategy officer, the process typically unfolds like this. A customer approaches Corviv with a request, often something broad like, we need capacity in Q1 of next year, what's the largest facility you can provide? Since these are usually existing clients, Corviv takes the request seriously and assesses whether it can secure an asset in time. Once confident in its ability to deliver, Corviv gives the client the green light. The two companies then formalize a contract in which the customer commits to leasing the GPUs once the data center is ready. To finance the project, Corviv initially funds the construction from its own balance sheet, which is why it raises equity in the first place. 
However, its equity capital is typically used only to construct the building itself. Once construction is complete, Corvier turns to its lending partners. Using the signed customer contract as collateral, it raises additional debt financing to equip the data center with servers, cooling systems, energy infrastructure and everything else needed to make it operational. Even though Corvier and AI data centers in general are seeing massive success, the business is not without problems. As we can see, Corviv has raised billions, winning lucrative contracts with companies desperate for GPU capacity. But the key question remains, are they building a lasting business or are they just capitalizing on a temporary market imbalance? There are two concerns when it comes to Corviv's business model. First is its dependency on large contracts. As we mentioned, Corviv has grown rapidly, largely due to its contracts with Microsoft. With Microsoft expected to spend tens of billions on GPUs, Corviv benefits as an external supplier of cloud-based GPU power. But what if Microsoft is only using Corviv as a stopgap? Given Microsoft's vast resources, it could eventually build its own GPU infrastructure for AI workloads like OpenAI's models. If that happens, Corviv's reliance on Microsoft could turn into a major vulnerability. But the second and perhaps the biggest problem with Corviv is related to its core business model. When we look at the AI infrastructure market, there are three types of players. Chip manufacturers like Nvidia, hyperscalers like AWS, and GPU rental companies like Corviv. Nvidia enjoys massive profit margins by controlling GPU design, supply chains, and innovation. Its value is clear, it creates a foundational technology that AI companies rely on. Hyperscalers offer a wide range of services that subsidize each other, meaning that they can keep customers even if a single segment is unprofitable. GPU rental firms, on the other hand, act as middlemen. They acquire GPUs at scale and lease them out, profiting from the current scarcity of AI computing power. The problem? Well, scarcity-driven business models rarely last. As GPU supply grows, prices will drop and margins will shrink. If these rental providers cannot differentiate themselves beyond just providing GPUs, their valuations could collapse. But there's another looming challenge that could threaten not just Corviv but the entire data center industry, electricity. Data centers use a lot of electricity because they run thousands of servers at the same time. Each server processes data and generates heat, which requires cooling systems to prevent overheating. These cooling systems, including air conditioning and liquid cooling, consume a significant amount of power. High-speed networking equipment and storage devices add to the overall energy consumption. And as the number of data centers continues to grow, so will their demand for electricity. In 2023, data centers accounted for approximately 4.4% of total electricity consumption in the United States, a figure that is expected to nearly triple to 12% by 2028. This growing dependency on electricity is not only pushing utilities to their limits, but is also creating a power supply crisis in regions that have traditionally been hubs for data center development. Historically, data centers have been strategically located in regions where electricity is relatively affordable and reliable. However, as these areas become saturated with high demand facilities, their grids are increasingly under strain. Some localities are facing longer lead times for new data center projects simply because power companies cannot guarantee enough capacity to support them. London, for example, has over 400 gigawatts worth of connection requests in the queue, with reports claiming that around 70% of these requests will fail to materialize because of power constraints. This overall situation has led to growing competition for electricity, forcing utilities to either prioritize industrial and residential needs over data centers or risk blackouts and instability in the broader grid. As a result, some governments are taking measures to manage energy distribution. Ireland, for instance, has halted new data center grid connections in the Dublin area until at least 2028 to ensure that the country's energy supply can meet broader national needs. All of this means that electricity might be a huge bottleneck that might limit the growth of the data center industry unless new and innovative solutions emerge in the future.